We have Revolver playing for Imaginary Gaming as the Purple Zerg at the 10 o'clock position or Merry-Go-Round and his opponent, the Green Terran player Marcus from Team Guild Hall, sees that. Just Guild Hall for short. Spawning at the 6 o'clock position and uh, I do know that Marcus favors mech play very much. So um, I definitely do expect him to do something like that on this map. Um, but I don't know how well this could play out actually because I mean sure you have you have you can you can do cute moves like uh, like putting your siege tanks over here and then just work with your Hellions around the potential third base of the Zerg player. The same can be applied. This is an even worse position actually for the Zerg player. If you put your tanks on this high ground then it's very very tough to dislodge them from there. You can also use the airspace around the uh, around the bases to just sneak drops past. With, uh, with mech you're going to have a lot of Vikings, Vikings anyway eventually so you can definitely do that um, but the center of the map you know it's uh, huh. I mean you can get attacked from multiple angles uh, your, your bases are not going to be as safe and you have high ground all around your uh, first secondary and ter tertiary bases so you know that might be a thing that revolver will use if Marcus goes mech in order to defend effectively versus that. Meanwhile, let's take a look at the openings. It's uh, it's a pool into hatch for revolver. And on Marcus's side, it's a reaper opening. So so far nothing uh, nothing too telling. He did send an SCV as well to uh, to scout out the base of his opponent. He did see the gas going down, so he knows by the timing of the hatchery and the timing of the pool and the gas, he knows exactly what kind of opening this is. And he also knows that the Reaper will come a little bit too late to the party to uh, to get anything done. But he's going to try anyway. The links are already out. Uh, the first queen in the main base is out as well. So I don't think Marcus will get very many kills over here. Um, at, at most he can hope to be a little bit annoying. And that's about it. So he's going to try to bring down the hatchery with little with little pistols in the meantime. These lanes are probably going to try to uh, deny the expan expansion SCV from going up but I don't think they'll have much luck as there is a defensive reaper over here. Nice going by Marcus, leaving that one... Uh, oh, but he does lose the SCV! Uh, that was a huge miss micro by Marcus and he has to send another one down there. Uh, that, that wasn't well done by any stretch of the word. And now with the third queen up, out, uh, Revolver is going to be just fine. He does start his link speed as well, but continues to mine gas, so maybe he wants to go into... Uh, into a quick lair or uh, or uh, or mainlings or uh, maybe he wants to play. Oh. He wouldn't play two base solids, right? I mean, revolver is not that kind of guy, is he? This could also be for uh, for ling upgrades. Uh, if you want to, if you want to get double evo chambers. You better continue mining that gas for as long as possible as you're droning up. No attempt at third so far. Oh, as I as I say that, but this is going to be caught by Marcus's Reaper. So that drone will not... It actually goes down, so the third has been delayed and a revolver will have to get his creep over there before he can, uh, before he can actually lay down that third base. Or at least send the queen. The Reaper is still over here. If it's on halt position, he might get the drone. Oh, it's on hold position, but it didn't get the drone. Wow! Uh, and that that gas was actually for uh, Gnome Ties Carapace. So a quick Overlord speed speed here for Revolver because <laughs> because he wants to get uh, he wants to get good scouting 
going for him. So probably he will... Uh, yeah, he already sends this one overlord. And he did see the uh, starport being built on top of the attack lab. So he definitely knows that Banshees are a possibility. Marcus will bring that overlord down, however, which is a little bit weird. With overlord speed, you should be able to get away every single time at this stage of the game. So I wouldn't necessarily label that as a mistake, but definitely not... Uh, not the ideal situation for Revolver, as he is supply blocked as well. A couple of lengths running past, they did eat uh, two of those tank shots and will be moving back. Marcus is definitely, definitely gonna try and put on some pressure on his opponent. Uh, maybe he'll try to go with the Hellions and... Um, uh, this could be a triple-pronged attack. If he goes in with the Hellions and the Marines at the same time, and then waits for the Banshee as well, um, as he's getting that cloak, and just uh, tries to maximize his damage. I don't see any spores at the natural expansion. I'm going to switch this switch this away just in case uh, some of those players are watching the stream. We do have a two-minute delay, guys, but whenever there's a pause, you don't know how long that pause will be, so it's just a security measure on my part. Getting back into the game, we have that drop heading towards uh, towards the natural expansion. Wasn't scouted so far, and I don't see any spore crawlers going down uh, just yet. Only only now a revolver uh, placed those downs. The place Place those down. Oh my god. Eight uh, workers killed. Not uh, not too shabby, considering that Marcus did save that medivac and all those Hellions. Those spores, of course, will be done just in time for the Banshee. For the for the uh, for the cloak to finish. Marcus is not gonna not gonna attack with that, however. Now we have one one all the way. Four revolver. Baning nest going down, so do we have an armory, by the way, somewhere in here? Yeah, we have. I'm a little bit surprised that Marcus did not try to circle around and go into the main base with Hellbats. Because, you know, his opponent is on Lings, or has been on Lings, pretty much this entire time. And without Banelings, it's difficult to deal with four Hellbats. It's uh, like, eventually you'll kill them, but you're going to lose so many Lings. Oh, there we go, how about transformation, but I'm really curious as to why Marcus... I mean, he definitely could have could have gotten more value out of those units, I think. Uh, as it is, Revolver is sitting nicely on three bases. He's at 64 drones, and he's getting his Spire up. Two, two upgrades for his, for his uh, Zerglings, and... He's getting 11 Banelings. These could be defensive, because maybe he did see those Hellbats just now. I think he did. So that's uh, that's a cue for him to go and morph in as many Banelings as he thinks he'll need to defend, because he does not want to lose very many of those, ba or those, uh, or those Zerglings. Meanwhile, a counterattack to the third base. There's a tank over here, but that will splash uh, Marcus's own SCVs as well, but the Hellbats will finish up and clean this away. Nice defense from Marcus. Only one SCV has been lost so far, and now we have this slow-moving force across the map. Marcus doesn't know about this uh, fourth base just yet, and he's going to try and hit the third. There's a scan. There are no spores around, and there's one queen. Halbats in a very good position. Mutas are not out yet, but the Bailings are rolling in, taking out, well, a decent number of those. And the rest will be up to the Queens. It's kind of hard to see under the Overlords what's actually going on. But Marcus still has these four Hellbats, and they're doing a hell of a job. They did kill 11 more workers. I don't know if that was worth it. But this Banshee, six more kills in the main base, has to be careful of not getting into the range of that Spore, craw spore Crawler. As the Mutas are on his tail, where do we have that Overseer? Here it is, and the Banshee does go down. So, all in all, a decent trade for Marcus. And if Revolver is not careful, he will start losing Overlords left and right on the map. And he's going to, he's going to build more Zerglings. Uh, Jula Heron 
thank you very much for the follow. And let's take a look over here. Well, we're establishing one more base, so he is still up a base on Marcus. Marcus is not sleeping on the job, as it were. He's getting uh, his next command center. Unfortunately, the only expansion he could take efficiently is this one, or this one, if he wants to do it quickly. The best one to take, obviously, would be this over here, but it's being creeped up by the Overlord, so... Marcus will have to clean that out first and then wait uh, for the creep, wait for the creep to recede. Now the hive is almost done, however, and it, this is where things get a little bit tricky because we may see vi vipers um, being added on into the mix for revolver, or we could see something like broodlords, greater spire. He did not get double spire, however, so won't be working on those uh, air upgrades too heavily. Level 3 attacks started. Adrenal Glands as well. Adrenal Glands is probably one of my favorite upgrades when I play Zerg. It just helps so much. Like, I don't know why you would ever not get that upgrade. And surprisingly, however, Army Supplies... It, the Army Supply is, uh, is in favor of the Terran player, so... I don't know, I mean, this could be the case of Marcus just moving out with his with his army and Revolver not having the ideal or correct response to it and that just, you know, you kill the majority of the army but you can't quite finish that off and those couple of remaining Thors and Hellions will just eat through all of your bases and then you're like, what the hell am I supposed to be doing against this? Because, you know, Yuta, Link, Blink, it's not the it's not the most effective composition versus mech. I mean, you have to be pretty active out on the map with it. And it looks like Revolver is playing almost as if he was up against a bio player. I mean, he's getting Ultralisks. Oh, he forgot centrifugal hooks! He's not gonna have l bailing speed in order to... In order to uh, take down all those uh, all those high hit point units it's not a good thing only 27 banings things are not looking good we have way too many links out on the field 132 against what against 15 hellbats Ugh. this could be ugly not gonna lie no run buys no counter attacks so far Another base trying to be set up by uh, by Revolver, but Marcus is going to take this one down. And I think it's exactly as I said, he's just going to slowly knock out one base after another. And Revolver is gonna have to have the sickest engagement ever. He's morphing more banelings right now, realizing that he's gonna need those to bust through, but there are so many tanks. If Revolver cannot catch those tanks out of position once, all those banelings are just gonna go down before they even make contact. And Marcus establishing a pretty good position for himself over here. He's going to creep, uh, slowly creep forward with those tanks. Two Ultras leading the charge, followed by Zerglings and banelings. How quickly can they kill off this force? This is just such a sea of Zerg units flooding forward. Marcus kiting back with Thor's, nonetheless the slowest unit in this matchup. And he's going to lose his entire army in the end. It was enough. It was enough. Revolver breaks through and remaxes on nine more, or nine more Ultralisks as he's establishing this base on, uh, on the left side in the bottom is he going to counterattack he very well may i mean it's the right thing to do at this t at this point doesn't know about the top base but he definitely wants to knock out this or at least prevent marcus from uh, mining from it army supplies are still very close though 97 to 81 and the upgrades are starting to get dangerously high f here for the terran player he's approaching to to be having plus three attacks on his vehicles and ships. Well, this could be, this could still be difficult for Revolver. 
it's it's been favorable trades for uh, for Marcus so far. John 117, thank you very much for the follow. Appreciate it very much, man. Hopefully you're enjoying the games. So a little bit of a run by over here, but no SCVs uh, to be found there. So just making sure that base is not operational anytime soon. And uh, speaking of run bys, looks like Marcus has the same idea. That's been spotted, however, so those uh, Hellions will not get too much done. Marcus will have to retreat. Please don't try to trade against those links. Nice micro, anticipating the wraparound by the Zergans. But here come the Ultralisks with the uh, Collector's Edition. Heart of the Swarm Collector's Edition skin. Don't they look just uh, fabulous in that purple? It looks like Revolver is just going to take over the entire map. Now Marcus does have a couple of last breaths in him. He is going to move out once more because why the hell not? And frankly, he is Max. He has to because he has to take more bases. The income is going to start falling. He's going to start to fall for him. Oh, the Widow Lines are not burrowed. The tanks are not sieged. At least not all of them as the, as the Ultralisks crash into this force. There are a couple of Banshees out in the air and uh, also Hunter Seeker missiles from the Ravens, but that's not going to be enough. These Ultras with those Carapace upgrades, they're just chewing through those Mac units and will be taken down by the Banshees. And still, Marcus is still in this. He's still in the game. 87 army supply to 67. I'm starting to... Oh my god, 26 Mutas on the way. now. Okay, what do we have for anti-air? 10 Vikings with plus 3 attack. And those Mutalisks have 0 armor upgrades. They, they have only plus 1 flyer attack upgrade, so they will, they will not be very cost effective versus the Vikings. Marcus is building more Banshees as well. Does he have any Ravens though? He has one Raven, so he may use that for PDDs against the Mutalisks. Uh, how much energy does that have? Quite enough for uh, quite enough for a PDD. Almost for uh, uh, almost for a PDD. Uh, but it's going to be a question of where does the PDD goes uh, goes down. Uh, Mark is not playing too bad of a game, and I, I, I'm starting to really think that Revolver may have chosen the bad composition, I'd say, versus a Mackin player. These Mutas are a decent chance, but Marcus does have Widow Mines! Oh my god! That was painful. That was very painful. Well, at least Revolver will get this uh, command center for his troubles. May lose some Mutalisks, however. 29 Mutalisks have gone down already. That's not a pretty picture being painted here by Marcus as he's trying to run, run by with more Hellions once more and we have 42 drones killed. Um, in terms of economy however, Marcus is not mining that much, only 400 minerals a minute so he has to bring some of these bases down. And uh, some of the mining bases, he's, uh, he's heading towards the main base but there are no minerals over there. Natural is running pretty damn dry, as well as the tertiary. And the fourth is still pretty looking good, looking pretty good uh, with uh, with the mineral count. Now Marcus, he's actually not... He hasn't started to add Thors to his composition yet. Instead, he's been adding on, uh, he's been adding on Banshees and Ravens and Widow Mines. So, I think he's just going to try to... Um, Try to defend with. Uh, he's going to try to defend with widow mines, and use maybe use banshees to just fly around the map and take out one expansion after another. The, he would have to find some way to deal with the overseers, however. But it looks like this is what he's going to do. He could snipe the space. All he has to do is target fire it. Marcus, come on, you could have killed that base already. Because this is the way that he will win the game. If he can if he can kill one base after another or just, you know, swoop in with the banshees 
Just like a seven banshee hit squad or something like that. Kill the base and fly away. Uh, over time, this will severely hamper the Zerg player and it might give Marcus a, decis a decisive edge. Uh, this is not going to be pretty. But many of these Widow Mines actually have been triggered. So now the Mutalisks can fly in. And uh, they are smelling blood right now. They know the wid Widow Mines have been triggered. There's one or two remaining that have not been triggered, but I think Revolver will go ahead and snipe them. He's eating some more shots, but this is just too many Widow Mines. I mean, come on. Oh, oh! That was so close. But I think Marcus should really send some units over there. I mean, this base will go down eventually. He can't just leave this base to its own devices. And he needs that base as well. I mean, this is going to be his only mining base right now because his third is gone. This base never has been even established. So here come the units. Marcus realizing that. He's in a little bit of trouble if this base goes down. Here come the Bailings! The Widow Mines! Oh! Huge hits! All the Bailings have just gone down. But so have the Widow Mines. And Marcus, oh, just barely does not lose this base. How does he not lose this base? How does he not lose that base? Oh my god! Will he end up losing it to the Mutas? PDDs, PDDs, no, no PDDs. One PDD went down. Wow. But you know, this also gives Revolver the opportunity to take this space. To take this space, to take this space. Because Marcus has to stay and defend. This is such a scrappy game in many respects, but on the other hand, it's highly entertaining. Nice micro by Revolver. And he's going to add on a second Spire, or not, <laughs> but he's getting plus three Flyer attacks. So he's getting he's getting very uh, cost effective with those upgrades right now. And this is so many Mutas, in fact my computer is going to start lagging in a little bit. More Seeker missiles, but not effective, those Mutas are just just too fast. I have to wonder if uh, Thor's would not have been a better option here for Marcus. They are slow, at least, you know, slower, but maybe maybe you can micro them a little bit better, or, you know, they're more reliable, so to speak, versus the Mutalisks compared to Ravens, because the Mutalisks can outrun the Seeker missiles, and they can, you know, if you throw down a PDD, they don't have to fight. Okay, now this base is definitely going down. There is no widow mine coverage over here. Yep. And this is Marcus's Q tack. No! No! He rebuilds that immediately, really? Okay. So this is a really this is starting to be a really weird game, guys. Um Revolver has pretty much the entire map to himself. His bank is so big and he's maxed out. The army supplies are very similar but look at the worker count. 72 drones to 19 SCVs. Yeah, I, I mean Marcus does have quite a bit of these orbital commands but 19 SCVs is 19 SCVs and the the income, you can see the difference here already. The income for uh, the Zerg player is just like eight times as big. And Marcus is not mining any gas! So this 481 gas that he's got right now, that's the last gas, at least for the time being, that he's gonna have. He's not mining gas from here, or at least not efficiently, and not from here. No refineries up there even. And nine more mutalisks in production. Um, I think Revolver has this at this point. I mean, I, I know I've said this about Marcus versus Rote before, but... This time, I mean, surely, surely there is, n th there is no way 
that Revolver can lose this game. Now, granted, Marcus is giving it. Oh! One more hit, and all those mutas are dead. Revolver has to be very careful. Very careful! Ooh. Wow. That was sloppy, just. I mean, there wasn't. Overseer before with these mutas, so getting two hits on those mutas That's uh, That's just bad micro right there that should not ever happen You should see the widow mines or maybe that was a calculated risk because you know you cannot when you have this many widow mines Clustered up you cannot kill all of those fast enough before at least one of those goes off so um, Maybe Revolver was like, I can take two hits. You know, and then he just backs away. Another hit from a Widow Mine. And Marcus, he has to go. He has to go. The army supplies are similar, but Marcus cannot, <coughs> cannot replenish this army. All he will be able to make, pretty much, are Hellions. After this trade. And I think Revolver knows this. He's not fighting with... All of his units at the same time, however, needs to bring in his uh, bring in his mutals as well. I think if he flies around and backstabs this army, uh, he could very well take it out with the mutals. Of course, there are ravens for the PDDs, but I don't know. This is also a nice move, taking down taking down those widow mines. Now he's coming in with the ultralisks, tries to take down those tanks. Not very, not very effective here, and uh, he's going to take down this base once more. Marcus still has this one. He's on 19 SCVs still, and not getting much done with his main army in the center. So he's going to pull back, leaving a auto turret there. Another base goes down, and revolver. Well, uh, I think he uh, may have been able to close this game out couple minutes ago but somehow we just cannot we just cannot find the correct way to do it oh okay gets the widow mine he did not take another hit and as we said before all that Marcus can build now are Hellions pretty much but the muta flock is at 38, they have plus 3 attacks. I mean, they're going to be taking things down so fast. It's not even going to be funny. So let's take a let's take a look at Marcus's second to last or maybe the last move out. I think he has to go for uh, for the trade right now, and he would be wise to bring those Hellions with him, because he's going to need them. They are completely useless versus the Mutalisks, and they would help versus the Lings and uh, Banelings, at least somewhat. There's so many Banelings. That's not going to work, Marcus, that's not going to work. Wow! So many connections, and Marcus is still alive somehow, but he has nothing on the ground. All that remains over here are the Vikings, Ravens, and two Banshees. These, uh, these Onions are fighting against Ultralisks, but it's not a good fight to take. Over time, they may. They, they may bring them down, but they're pretty clustered up, so the Ultralisks with the... Oh, he's leading them to the Widow Mines. Okay, now it makes sense. Goodbye. But in the end, Marcus is going to lose these Hellions, and uh, there's the GG. Congratul 